Hey guys, I'm David with MediaUnlock.net, and today we're going to be doing a walkthrough of the Canon 80D. Now this will be broken up into two or three or as many as four videos. In this very first video though, we're just going to go over the body and all the buttons that are on the body as far as like the wheel system up here. We're going to look at what all this does. We're going to look at the screen up here. We're going to go in the back and we're going to look at all this stuff and how it works. And I'm just going to do my best to explain everything about this camera for you so you can follow along. It's like a uh, audio manual. So you pretty much, instead of reading your manual, the idea is that you can follow along on this and I will do my best to explain most of the functions. We're not going to go over everything, but we'll probably go over about 85 to 90 percent of everything on this camera and all of its settings. So let's get started. So the very first thing, as you can see, it's the Canon 80D. This is the very front. This is where you would connect a lens. You just take this piece off right here. And depending on your lens, if you actually look on your lens, you'll either have a red or a white dot on your lens. So if you do, red matches with red, which red goes for red lenses are full frame lenses for Canon. And then white lenses are crop sensor lenses. Now this is a crop sensored body. So we can just put our cap back on, of course, we want to make sure we don't get sensor dust in. So whenever I actually put a lens on the body, what I do is I actually hold this down, I pull this off, and then I put a lens up in it and connect it this way. Now it takes a little bit of practice, but the really nice thing about it is, is that you actually keep sensor dust out. So a few other things, this is going to be your shutter button, and this is also how you're going to autofocus. So when you're shooting, you're gonna focus. We are gonna talk about your back button focus, which works much better than that. So this would just be just a shutter button, and then you use your back button to actually do the focusing. So we'll talk a little bit about that later on in this video. Uh, right there, you have your remote sensor, and then you have your red eye reduction uh, right there. The little white piece right there is red eye reduction. Over here to the side, we'll go on and do that. If you notice right there, you pop that up to get your on-camera flash. Of course, I hardly ever use it. And this button will release your lens once you want to change out lenses. You'll push this button down, it releases it, and then you can pull your lens off the camera. So what do we got here on the side? Let's take a look. We got some really cool new feature, a single awesome new feature that they've added to this body. And I believe this is the first Canon body that they've added this to. So if you take this piece off right here, up in this corner, you'll notice that up in the top part, we can now add in a pair of headphones. Our, the mic goes up here in the top and the headphones goes down here. So you can actually plug a pair of headphones in right there and then you plug in a mic right there. So you can actually do live audio monitoring with the Canon 80D, which I think is amazing. Uh, it's something that a lot of Canon DSLR users have been waiting for for a long time. So let's close that up and move on. Down here is where you will connect your plunger, uh, aka a intervolometer, something that you're going to control off camera with. So this is going to be great to hook up one of these items if you're wanting to do a time lapse. Now the camera does have built in time lapse, but I still like to do my time lapse manually. So what you can do is you can get a, a shutter release right here that would connect into this. And then you can use that to take pictures, especially when you're in a very uh, long shutter, this keeps your camera from shaking if it's sitting on a tripod. All right, let's move over to the next. Of course, we've got USB hookups and HDMI right here. So we'll push that to the side. So as you can notice, we have uh, a mini HDMI to HDMI, and then we just have your USB hookup, which will go into, let's say, your you can do live view um, with your camera. Uh, connected through your uh, computer using the Canon app. So you can actually monitor what you're actually doing or shooting uh, connected via the USB. Uh, or if you want to back up photos, you can do that. And then right here, you can just uh, connect in via HDMI right there. So let's jump to the back. So you have a really nice screen. As you can see, it is articulating. So we are able to pull it out and it is able to flip around as you can see, which is really nice as far as it goes this way and then as far as it goes this way. So we'll flip it back out and put it back into the camera. So what else do we have here? We've got a few other buttons to go over uh, as you guys can see. One thing to mention that I think a lot of people get confused on and don't realize, especially people that use glasses, you have a 
little piece right here, little dial, it's diopter I think is what it's called. And so what that does is, is if you're looking through your, your viewfinder here and you're trying to take a picture and even though you feel like the, the shot should be in focus and it's not, um, and you use contacts or glasses, well guess what? Move this little guy right here and you may be able to get it to come into focus. Or if it was in focus and maybe it got bumped and moved out of the way, then it could be set for another person's eyesight, not yours, just by accident. So move this and this is going to probably bring your uh, shot back into focus, um, which is really going to help. And I think a lot of people get confused uh, trying to shoot with Canon and don't realize they just move this, especially if you use glasses, you can get that same depth or whatever you need for your eyesight. Now uh, here we have our menu button and our inf info button. Anytime that you're shooting pictures or video and you want info on the screen, just remember to hit your info button. This is going to bring up your histogram other information that you need. There's like three or four different screens and we'll cycle through them here uh, in a little bit. So this is your record button. This is how you're going to record video. Now if you switch, I'm in photography mode right now and now I'm in video mode. Photography mode, video mode. Um, this is also how you open up your live view. So when you turn your camera on and you don't want to actually look through here and you want to actually see the screen as is, you can hit this and the live view will actually pop up. So since we don't have a lens connected, what we'll do is we'll go on and turn the camera on. And there's no card, but we're gonna open up the. So, and then we could hit this, and this is going to go into live view, which is gonna give you information. Now the screen is touch screen, which is really, really nice. And you can always just hit menu, menu to go, hit menu once or twice, or hit your shutter button. So if you hit something, and just hit your shutter button and that's going to bring you back to the front. So uh, again you can hit this and you go back into viewing through the optical piece right there. So if you want to record video we'll switch to this. It will automatically open live view. It's telling me I don't have a lens connected. It's okay. I'm not worried about getting a little dust in there. And then we can hit this and then we will start recording. Of course it's not going to let me record without a lens attached. Alright so let's look at the rest of the back. You have Q right here. Now what Q does is it brings up extra menu options that you can control when in video mode, as you can see. When I hit Q, I can now go through here and I can change settings within Q. But most of these settings can also be changed in the menu, uh, in the menu item. So we're gonna go over it when we actually go through part two, which will be, we'll start going through the menu section um, and we'll go over a lot of these settings that are right here in Q. You can also do in menu. So when you get better and understand those menu items, then you can start using Q and controlling things right from the back of the camera. Um, but until then, just learning how the menu system is, is the best way to get better at this camera. Okay, we have our playback button. So if we had a card in here, which we don't, if we did have a card in here, we'd be able to play back and look at our video or pictures or whatever we just took. Um, right down here, when we're in here, we can delete stuff. If there's a picture, we'd be able to hit the delete button right here at the bottom and delete it. We can also lock. So if we want to lock our aperture, we can lock our aperture. And if we want to unlock our aperture, we can unlock our aperture and have full control over it. This controls your aperture right here. So if you notice, our aperture is changing right here. That's our f-stop right there. And as you can notice, I'm changing my f-stop right here. But what I can do is, again with the lock, now I cannot change my f-stop. It is locked, the wheel is locked. So I pretty much never lock the wheel, but it is an option. And you can just hit this and you can control your aperture manually. Uh, but for me, uh, coming from earlier days, the very beginning days of digital photography, there's just something to be said about controlling it manually for me. Um, this is going to be how you're going to get around your menu system and then set will act as an enter pretty much. So if I was to hit menus and then I wanted to go scroll through my menu system and then I wanted to select something I could. But again, we're going to go over that probably in part two of this tutorial. All right, so let's move on. Your autofocus right here. Now this is, this is what I use to focus all of my pictures. Again, I don't use this top piece up here, the shutter release. I just don't use that at all. 
because what happens is if you're taking pictures and you click for the shutter release and you're snapping, 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 especially sometimes if there's moving objects, it, the camera will want to constantly keep refocusing on a different part or it may focus on a part that you don't want it to. What happens with AF lock, what you do is you hit this to focus and then once you've focused, it will hold that focus. Even if you move and it becomes out of focus, it's gonna hold that focus to you re focus. So for me, that's really big because once I've locked in my focus, that's the focus I want to stick with. So I'm able to just hit this. It focuses on what, on what I want it to, and it stays focused. Where if you hit this, it's refocusing every time that you're using your shutter button. So what this does is I hit this, it locks focus, and then I just hit my shutter button to release the shutter and take the picture. So we have our zooms here. So if we need to, one really cool aspect is you can zoom way in. And if you are in manual focus shooting video, we can switch this lens to manual focus. I can now control my focus here on the actual lens, the focus ring right here. And so I can get my focus exactly where I want it. And then I can hit zoom again, and then I can zoom back out. So the nice thing is you just have this extra zoom to really zoom in see the exact spot that you know you want to have focused for video and then you can manually control that with your lens and get that that perfect focus that you're really trying to get the zoom option works really well if you're looking at pictures let's say i had some pictures on here i can zoom in and out of those pictures as well all right so we've gone over all the buttons on the back we still have the dial to go over and of course your on and off is right here i probably should have gone over that a little bit earlier but your on and off is right here and of course if you want to change SD cards you're gonna do that right there very easy if we want to change batteries very simple you have your battery here pop it out push it back in uh, serial number is gonna be right here you may need that for the Canon software if you didn't get a CD or you don't take CDs you can download the software needed to control the camera manually through uh, or remotely through your computer or tablet, um, you can download that software. It'll just ask for that serial number. And of course, this is how you're going to connect to a tripod. One more item I did not go over at the front because you really can't see it that well, but I know someone's going to ask me. And we'll see if we can get enough light on it. You see that button right here to the right? There's a button right here. It's your depth of field preview button. So it gives you a depth of field preview. And it's really kind of hard to see because it's in a really weird spot. But right there, you have your depth of field preview button. So if you click that, it's going to help with getting your depth of field set up. We are going to start on automatic mode. So as you notice, it is set to auto mode. This is completely 100% automatic and it's going to control everything. It's even going to have the pop-up flash if it thinks it needs to. Mainly what happens is the camera meters the information and then it sets the settings and or the flash as needed depending on what the camera thinks that you need. It kind of works like a light meter. So if you're really struggling on manual mode to get your settings correctly, what you can do is um, you can do a half click on automatic. Now again, you know I said that this back button right here does the focus. This is under manual mode. This does not work under automatic mode. Under automatic mode, everything's set up to where this is the, the autofocus here. This is the shutter release as well. As you can see, it thinks it needs light, so it's popping up the flash. So that's just a thing to mention. This will be set for manual mode. So when you're in manual mode, you can set that up and you can control your focus points from behind, or you can control your focusing from right here. But again, in automatic mode, everything is 100% automatic and it's going to meter. So what I was saying though is, if you're struggling in manual mode, but you've got your ISO shutter and aperture down, figuring out how to set those settings, it's very simple. You use the automatic mode to meter, and what you do is kind of like a light meter. Use it to meter. You get that information right here, and then you remember it, and then put it into the manual mode, and then you can, can tweak it a little bit to get exactly the lighting that you're wanting. Now, if the flash keeps popping up and it's throwing off your automatic mode, the really cool thing is if we switch, we're just going to push this button right here, and then we can move it. Now we're in automatic mode without flash. So now it's going to give me the settings that it thinks it needs, but the flash will not pop up. So the really cool thing about that is, if you, again, are needing automatic, but the flash is popping up and giving you this unnatural light that you do not want, 
you can get around that by going into automatic mode without flash. Again, you can use that same thing as you see ISO, shutter, and aperture right here. The really cool thing about that is you can actually see that and then you can remember that information right here. Put your camera in M mode, set your settings to that, and then tweak it depending on what you need. So think of automatic mode as a light metering mode. It's not the best light meter. You can definitely go out and buy a light meter that's going to do a better job. But this is a quick, easy fix that I used all the time starting out as a photographer. Okay, so we've got creative mode, which is just going to have some creative information as far as like special scenes and stuff like that. Uh, but we're not really going to dive into creative mode. In my opinion, most of these automatic settings, unless you absolutely have to, don't use them. Learn how to get on these, these manual modes that we're going to go over here. Please, it will help your photography career out so much if you're trying to get better. If you're just a hobbyist, I guess leave it in automatic, and, uh, and you should be good to go. Um, we have right here, scene, uh, the scene mode right here. If we move to this one, this is the creative filters mode. So you can go into these filters and change these different filters if you want to. Again, I don't use it. And then these are some of my favorite ones. These are custom one and custom two. So you can actually preset custom settings. So let's say that you have a specific type of photography that you do all the time, like me. I do a lot of astrophotography. It's one of my favorite things. So what I could do is I could go to C1 or C2, preset all the astrophotography settings that I'm going to use on a regular basis, and I can still tweak those settings once they're preset. So the really cool thing is I can go to C2, set up my camera, see how the lighting is for the stars, and if it's off a little bit from the previous time that I shot, because maybe I'm in a different location, but the settings are going to be very similar. You're going to be using some of the very same settings. Well. I can just tweak that a little bit and then shoot. So that's the really cool thing about these creative, uh, these custom function modes. It will remember the settings that you put in there, and then once you switch to them, it will automatically go to these settings, and you can save and memorize those settings, which I think is absolutely amazing. So you have C1 and C2, of course. Now we're going to go to bulb mode. Now some of you may or may not know what that is. Bulb mode is fantastic for any time you need to do a long shutter speed where you're going to drag or have the shutter open for more than 30 seconds. So what bulb mode does is you can it you just you would just hold it down and if you know notice I've got a little counter here and it's taking time. So it's ho holding the shutter open right now and the shutter's been open for 10 seconds. I let go and now it takes a picture. Of course, it's going to be way overexposed because there's way too much light coming in right now. Even though it seems like it's dark, 10 seconds of the shutter being open is going to overexpose a shot in this setting or scene. So that bulb mode is really used a lot, again, for me when I do astrophotography. Um, if you do some kind of urban type photography where you need to shoot a building, but there's people like in New York walking, you can stack filters, you can hold bulb mode down for four or five minutes, and then all the people will be gone, but you'll still get that beautiful shot of the, of the building or whatever uh, subject, or uh, not really subject, that's to say, but whatever object you're trying to shoot should still be there. As long as the object is not moving, your camera's sitting on a tripod, and you probably are going to need a filter because you're going to need probably an extra 10 or 15 stops of light. But that's a whole other story right there. So let's move on. Manual mode. I pretty much exclusively shoot in manual mode only. I hardly ever go into automatic mode. I hardly ever go into any of these other uh, modes, the AV, TV, and P mode. We're going to go over them, of course. But manual mode. This is going to give you full functionality, full control of your camera. This is what you're going to be using all the time. So in manual mode, and this is what you should be using all the time. I guess you're not necessarily going to be using it all the time, but this is where you guys need to get to um, in photography to really take it to the next level in my opinion. So again, you got your shutter is going to be right here and you can see your shutter is going to be this bottom one right here. And again, our wheel down here that we talked about earlier is going to control your aperture. And then when we want to hit ISO and now we can, and we'll just turn this little light on, hit ISO and now, well, there we go. And now we can control our ISO. So those how you control your shutter. ISO, and then aperture when you're shooting with the Canon 80D. Now there's a lot more settings that we could go into like white balance and uh, 
noise reduction and a lot of other things, but we're not gonna we're not gonna dive into those right now. So now we have A V. So what is A V? A V is aperture priority. So if you notice, we'll just hit this to bring up uh, just a half click to bring up your settings. And if you notice when I change this is going so aperture is going to be up here shutter is going to be down here but again this is aperture priority so the priority is when it, say i know i need my aperture at an f8 what it's going to do is it's going to try to compensate for the, it's going to kind of meter the light again and it's going to compensate for an f8 with an iso of 800 and it's going to again i can just do a half click here and as you can see as i change it's going to change the shutter speed depicting. So why would you want to use that? Well, let's say you're doing a shoot with a model and you can't get your light right. Well, you know that 5.6 and f8 are going to be really nice, sharp images. Okay, again, 5.6 between 5.6 and f8 are going to be your, some of your, the sharpest images that you can get. You go over f11, you get diffraction, you go under 5.6, you're going to start getting a lot of depth of field that you may not want. So where's that perfect little medium? That perfect little medium is usually between 5.6 and f8. So I'm shooting a model. I know I want an f8, right? I, but I don't know what I need to get my shutter at. And then I can actually still control my ISO if I need to bring up. So if I need, if I know it's too much light, I need to bring my ISO down. So then that's going to change my shutter and at an f8. Okay. So this is a way to practice and getting better at manual. But again. I just don't suggest getting used to using AV. I know a lot of other photographers do, and some will tell you that I'm telling you wrong here. I feel very confident in saying that I just think you should just learn how to shoot out a manual. That's what I do 95 to 100% of the time. All right, so we're going to move on. We're going to move on to TV. So what exactly is TV? TV is shutter priority. So it's going to give the priority over the shutter speed. Again, we're going to do a half click right here, and we'll turn this light back on. And as you notice, when I change my shutter, it's not going to actually change my f-stop. It's letting me know that I've got my ISO too low for this scene. So let's bring my ISO up. And now when I change my shutter, if I bring my shutter down to, let's say, 160, it's going to bring my f-stop up. So why do we want to do that? Well, again, if you're having trouble with lighting, maybe you're going to your kid's sporting event, okay? And you know that you need a shutter of, let's say it's a basketball game. So with a basketball game, a minimum shutter speed of 400 is what I'm comfortable with. Again, so now it's going to put my F stop at 5, and it's going to put my shutter at 400. Again, I can change my ISO, and that will have a little control over how these come out. So TV is going to be shutter priority. And last but not least is P, program mode. So what is program mode? Well, program mode is going to change the shutter or the aperture depending on what you need. Again, you change your ISO, that's going to throw these other settings. So that's at 160 at F5. If we bring this up, and now it's going to, as you move, it's going to change those settings for you. So program mode controls either, it's, it's pretty much aperture, aperture priority, or shutter priority, depending if you want to control it by shutter or aperture. So program mode is going to give you a little bit more freedom than TV and AV. Again, I'm just going to say it one more time. Go back to manual mode. Learn how to use it. You're going to love working out of manual mode, and it's just going to make so much more sense. So we've only got a few more things to go over, but this is going to be the most complicated part of the camera, and that's going to be going over these settings and all the stuff that this does inside here. Let's take a look at the right half of the Canon 80D. One thing I haven't mentioned is this is your hot shoe. So this is where you'll put your attachments, your flashes, and any other things that may go into a hot shoe. One of my favorite little hot shoe pieces that I use all the time is this little cube. And it is a cube for getting your levels right. And it just slides right into the hot shoe. And it's great for any time that you need to level out something. So. There we go, it's just slid in, I can level out something, and it's really great for that. Again, your diopter is right here for your, for your eyesight, so that you make sure that it is going to be, whatever your eyesight is, it's able to, you're able to plus and minus that right there. Uh, again, shutter release is right here, and this is how you're gonna take pictures. Uh, it's set to a timer for 10 seconds. We'll go over that in a second, how to change those options. We'll go on and let it take its picture. 
Um, and then we have this. So one of the cool things that they've done with the ADD, and they may have done this with other camera bodies, but I haven't seen it um, with other camera bodies, is they're putting their autofocus points right here. So the really cool thing is you have four different options for autofocus points. So if you just tap it, and you, when you're actually looking through the viewfinder here, you can actually see the different options for autofocus points. This has 45 cross autofocus points. So this is going to do great for sports photography. And so you can actually change the different mode that you want. And then within the mode, you can select specific points that you want your lens to focus on so that you're going to get the sharpest, best focus possible. So I really like the autofocus options with this Canon ADD. It's pretty amazing. Again, this is going to be our shutter right here. And now we're going to go over all these buttons. They're pretty simple. It's not confusing. Of course, this button right here is going to light it up, and then you can turn it off. And I think it goes off after like 15 or 20 seconds or something. So we'll turn it on because it helps you see a little bit better. And I'll try to remember to keep hitting it. So you've got your different types of autofocus right here. And you can scroll through them. You got one shot. Now, one shot is going to be really, really good for when you and or the subject are not going to be moving. So it's going to be able to really work. Now, I work mostly in one shot, especially when I'm doing landscapes. I'm putting my camera on a tripod. I'm shooting the landscape. So I've got it in one shot. Um, next is going to be your AI focus. AI focus, I don't really understand why people really use it that much. Maybe someone could leave a comment. I never use AI focus. And it just has to do with where you're not as worried about where you focus with your subject and or as a photographer. Really, I use one shot and AI servo. So servo is gonna be great for any time that you're going to be shooting any type of moving. So the idea is that it will keep, re it does a really good job of refocusing and sticking with the focus if you have a moving subject, if you and or the subject are moving, this is going to really help you out. So I used it recently. I went to Keeneland, which is a local racetrack. Uh, it is about an hour and a half from where they do the Derby, if many of you know what the Kentucky Derby is. So it's the other really big racetrack, and really it's actually bigger than Churchill Downs minus the Derby. Uh, during race season, more people probably end up going to Keeneland. It's kind of the thing to do than Churchill Downs. And so I was shooting horses, so I put it in AI servo so they could keep up with the horses while I was shooting. So that's why you want to use that. Now we're going to hit drive, and let's just start from the top here. So this is just a single shot. Okay, now the really cool thing about the Canon uh, AD or ADD is that it will shoot uh, at a high speed. You can get seven uh, frames per second up to 25 raw frames. Listen to this. How ridiculous is that? Now, it's going to take some time to buffer. I would not be able to look at these photos for another 10 or 15 more seconds because it's got to send all that information to the SD card. Um, and I don't even have an SD card in the camera at the moment. So mainly, that's how fast this camera can shoot with a faster SD card, which is amazing. So I like to keep it on high when I'm doing, um, when I'm shooting and I need to do multiple uh, shots per second. We'll hit drive again. Uh, and so you just have regular, then you have high. I keep it in high. Uh, oh, we're going the wrong way here. Then you've got small, so this is going to be a smaller resolution shot. Uh, then you've got small, uh, you know, mass speed. It's not going to be as fast. Not a big fan of that. Never use it. So we've got remote timer, and it's set to 10 seconds. You can go into the menu system, I believe, and manually reset that as needed so that it's not set to 10 seconds. There we go. And we're going to take a picture. And then you've got this set for a two second timer. So it's in one, two, and we'll hit drive again. And we're back up to the top of the menu. Of course, we know what ISO is and we can scroll through our ISO as needed. The really nice thing about this camera, it seems to do decent ISO up to around 2000, which I really, really like for a crop sensor camera. All right, so we have four different metering modes here in our Canon camera. So as you can see right here, here's our first one. This one's going to be evaluated metering mode. Now, what is metering modes? It's really, really kind of hard to explain, especially if you're just starting out as a photographer. So let me just try to make it as simple as possible, but not give you, not over, throw too much information at you all at once. Mainly it uses the different color 
colors in a, in a specific area with the lens. So this is going to be evaluated, so it's going to evaluate a larger area. And it's going to try to help you with your exposure depending on these colors. Now, I just would just suggest just stay in evaluated metering mode until you get better. Uh, there's spot metering mode, which we'll see what the next one is here. So this next one is going to be our partial metering mode, I believe. Canon's a little bit different than some other cameras. And so it's going to, it, it, the metering mode is depending on where that information that it's taking, that, that the information to help evaluate your exposure, your blues, your reds, your greens. So the different metering modes have to do with where they're getting that information from the scene, from the picture. So next we'll go to the next one. And this one's going to be your spot metering mode. Again, so this is going to take a smaller amount of information and it's going to evaluate that and try to give you the proper exposure or help you with your exposure when you're setting things up. Again, I would just say stay in center weighted metering mode. And then your very last one is going to be center weighted average metering mode. So it's going to average things out. It's going to be the same thing as center weighted metering mode, but it's going to average it out. So again, there's your metering modes. If you're wanting to learn more about them, Get online, read about it, watch some tutorials and videos. This is really kind of a hard thing to explain while I'm trying to run through this whole entire Canon ADD and explain to you how it works. So we're going to go over one more last thing, and uh, we could probably just do it right here. We'll just readjust focus. And I just wanted to show you guys one more thing. So when we turn the, when we hit Q, and we're in manual mode, we can go in here and we can control all this information with our fingers. Um, and we're able to just click on it. And then we can move as needed. Again, I don't see the use for a touch screen. Everything that I've ever done is just with my hand. I don't think about it. I just do it while I'm shooting. But you can go through here. You can change from RAW to JPEG. Uh, we can change our metering modes, our servo mode custom control mode, which I've never used. We can go in and mess around with our white balance. Um, we can also do our picture profiles. Picture profiles are great. I always shoot in neutral because that will give me the flattest possible image and allowing me to get the colors, to bring the colors that I want back in when using Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop. Again, this is when, but if we switch to manual mode, which our automatic mode, I should say, let's switch it into automatic mode. You're gonna get a different screen of what information you have control over. So um, so keeping it in manual mode is really, again, just that's where you guys need to be at, in my opinion. Uh, but it takes some time to get there. I have many tutorials that you can go through that teach us ISO, aperture, shutter speed, and other things that will help you get to uh, your manual mode faster if you want. So those are the buttons. This is the end of part one. Of course, there'll be a link one the very first link after this will give you a link to uh, part two. Um, it may not be out yet right off the bat. It may be already out. Just click on the link. And if there's a link, then there's probably the video. And you can go see part two. And of course, after that will be a link to go pick up this ADD off B&H's website. This does help us stay making videos, doing blog posts, kind of staying above water. Is that little bit of commission that we get anytime you guys buy something through B&H through our product link. And of course, after that, there's some links to our Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that where you can go check it out, follow along, like us, all that good stuff. But thanks for stopping in for part one. I'll be excited to see you guys in part two. Hey guys, if you'd like to check out our website where we have all kinds of fun and exciting blogs, videos, and extra information that isn't on our YouTube page, click right here. 
If you'd like to talk to us or contact us and kind of take a look at all the different stuff that we have going on, um, we've kind of funneled it all through our Facebook. You can hit our Facebook page right here and follow us or like us. Now, if you like to look at cool pictures and behind the scenes stuff, we do that on Instagram right here. So go on and follow us on Instagram. And of course, we've got our cute little bird right here, Mr. Twitter, and you can follow us as we do our short tweets.